Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a Celeste Light Dash. So here we have a project. This is what you're going to have at the end of this tutorial. If you want, you can download it off the GitHub. It will be in the description as always. So let's get into it. You'll notice this project's a little bit like yours, but I've just made the background a little bit dark so we can see the effect a little bit better. So I want you to go to your project settings, input map, and we're going to type LT up. LT down, LT right, LT left, and then dash. So let's do a dash first. So what we want to do is we want to go put a key in. We'll just say X for the keyboard and for the control pad, we're going to go to the joypad buttons. We're going to go down to Xbox B, which is your B button, obviously. Add that. And then we're going to put in our left thumb stick up, down, left, right. So I want you to go to your joystick as axis. LT will go up to left stick up. And then just do the do this for the rest of them. So I'll just cut to the end. And once that's done, we're going to close this down. Now we're going to set up the dash object. So you'll notice there's a trail. We're going to sort the trail out now. So what I want you to do is start a new object. We're going to go to the other node and we're going to use a sprite. We're going to rename the sprite dash sprite then we're going to save this in our objects folder and it doesn't really matter we could put in um, a texture here but what we're going to do is in code we're going to put the texture in there so we're going to leave this blank just for now but what i want to do on this is we're going to attach a script make sure it's in your script folder dash sprite yeah great and then we're going to add in the code and what this is happening is as soon as this sprite is activated, we get the modulate A, which is the alpha, so that'll make it opaque, opaque. And then what we're going to do is we're going to lerp the alpha down to zero. And once this gets less than 0 0.1, we'll delete it. So over time, it will fade out. And then that will give us that a trail effect if we have multiples of these as that player is moving. Now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the player. So we've got two new objects we're going to add. We're going to add in a timer. We'll call this dash timer. And we're going to make sure that this one shot is set to true because we don't want to repeat it. Now what we're going to do is add in a particles. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change this to 80. We'll leave this emitting on, but at the end of this, we'll turn it off. Then we go to drawing. We're going to make sure local chords is turned off. Then what we're going to do is in our texture, we're going to go to our sprites. This project will have this sprite if you want to download it. And now what we're going to do is go to the process materials, put in a new particles material, click it. We're going to go down to emission shape, go to sphere, uh, seven or so. We'll zoom in just so we can see a little bit better. I want you to go to your direction. I want this to be zero. We want this at 180. We're going to go down to our gravity. We're going to turn gravity off. We go to initial velocity, 19. We're going to go to angular velocity. We'll make this minus. And finally, we're going to go down to our scale. I'm going to add in a new scale curve and then we're going to edit the scale curve and what I'm going to do is drag this down, move this like this. So over time you'll see that it will uh, get smaller so it's almost like it's it's disappearing rather than just blinking out into space. Now obviously we don't want this on at all times so what we're going to do is we're just going to turn this off and we will enable it back in code. Another thing I want to do as well is cause this dash particles. And then we're going to save the player. We're going to go to its script. So go to the player script and we're going to put in some variables. So we'll put our export variables in first. And um, we're going to have that dash object that we just made. How fast our dash is going to be and how long for. So that's um, 200 milliseconds. So what I'm going to do while I remember is we're going to go back to the player. We're going to go find the dash object. We're going to load it in. We're going to go to objects where we put it. That's the dash object. Open. So we've got it in code now. Now we're going to put in some more variables. I'm going to put them down in here. And this is just going to be our 
check how we currently dash in, can we dash, and what dash, dash direction are we dashing in. Then we're going to go down to our on ready vars. And this is just going to make sure that we get the timer and the particles so we can then edit them in code. Now I'm going to go down to ready. I'm going to put this in. And all this is doing is we are making a, our dash timer connect to a signal. And when that times out, we'll activate this function. And let's put that function in now. And as you can see, when the timer times out, it will say we're no longer dashing. We're then going to make a function to check if we're using the controller or if we're using the keyboard. And this will, this is it. So what's going to happen is we're going to ignore that. Move this out. We're going to check that if our left thumbstick is down or left or right by these values, then we return true. So it is controller. If not, if that doesn't happen, then we have to return false, which means it's the keyboard. Then once we know this, we can add in this function which is get direction from input. And what this is gonna do is we're gonna to check to see are we, are we a controller or not. If we are the controller, we're gonna get a vector to and we're gonna face that in the direction the left thumbstick is um, held down in. Else we're not, we're gonna do it in the keyboard. Now the difference between this and, and the controller is that the controller has 360 degrees of movement because you can move your thumbstick in 360 degrees. However, this doesn't, the keyboard will be up, down, left, right, there, and the diagonal, so it's eight directions for movement. We'll clamp that to one. And what we're gonna do down here is we're gonna say, well, is the keyboard or controller being pressed left or right? Maybe it's not, maybe you've just jumped up in the air and pressed B. Well, you don't want it just to stick in the air. So what we're gonna say is, if we're facing the left, then go backwards. If we're facing right, go forward. And then we apply, apply the move speed. So we'll need a function called handle dash. And what this function is going to do is it's going to be in the pro, uh, physics process. So let's put it in here now. So now handle dash is always going to be, be called. And what this is going to do is it's going to just check, can we dash we're not touching the ground and we've just our action has just been pressed so it's either x or your b button it will then switch our situation so we, we are dashing so that will enable the uh, dash code up before so now our can dash is false so what this is, means is that we can no longer dash again until we touch the ground it's almost like a double jump you can double jump and you can only do that until you touch a ground or a wall then we're going to get dash direction from the import if that's your left stick on your controller or the arrow keys. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the timer, the dash timer, uh, to the dash length, which is 0 0.2 in this case. And that means that is dashing is going to be true for 200 milliseconds. And when this is finished, it will time out and then it will say we're no longer dashing. And here you can see we've got the, the dashing code. So we're saying, hey, are we dashing? Then what we want to do is we want to get the dash object that we created and then spawn that over and over again. What's going to happen is we're going to get the dash node texture, which is the sprite texture, and apply it to the player's current frame of animation. Then we're going to make sure that the animation is following the player. It's going to make sure that it's also facing the same way the player is facing. And then we're going to get the parent, which, which in this case will be main, and we'll add it. And then over time, that will disappear. While we're also doing that, we're going to make sure the dashed particles are emitted, so it's going to be set to true. Then, if we are touching the ground, we're not, we cannot be dashing, so make that false. If we're touching a wall, we also can't be dashing. If we're not dashing, then we no longer want to emit the particles. Now what we're going to do is go to check ground logic, so double click on that. Find touching is not touching ground and rays colliding which means that we've just touched the ground for the very first time which means that we can now dash if we don't do this it just means that we can only dash once and then you'll never be able to dash again and finally we're going to go to do physics and we're going to go this line here you'll notice that we've got a moving side on our motion now we've got a new thing here called dash direction so what we're going to do is we're going to hide this line here like this so you can see what it used to say and then we're just going to copy and paste this code and this is basically saying that are we dashing move this we don't need it then our motion is going to actually going to slide based on our 
dash direction and up is facing up and what we're going to do is once the dash is finished we don't want to um, fall really rapidly we just want to act as in we just let go of dash else if we're not dashing then do this this code as, as you can see the same as here so we can move this now because we understand what it means and finally that means just trying it out Brilliant. So if I go up, you'll notice that I can go this way, that way, and down, and same with the keyboard. But with the keyboard, it's only eight directions. It's really rigid. So you could do some more interest in this. We could increase the amount by a lot more. Because this is run on the GPU, it's actually uh, quite efficient so 8000 particles sounds a lot but because it's running the GPU it's not too bad and you'll notice it just looks kind of crazy so yeah just mess with the particles you will find something that looks really beautiful with just a little bit of trickery so thank you for stopping by and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one